wanted to share these watercolors with you guys. I've been asked to review them for a while now and most of the people that have been asking me to do them are my friends here in the Philippines so I was very surprised to find out that Prong is actually a US brand. For some reason I kind of thought they were an Asian brand but yeah they're very popular here in the Philippines they're student grade they're more centered for learners i think i want to talk about the packaging because i really like this elongated shape it fits really nicely in my hand and i also like the box as well it has a few mixing walls so you have an area where you can mix your colors these ovals they're removable so you can replace them when you run out i know refills are sold separately which is so cool i've seen them a lot online over here so i know they must be available in the us too love that you can take them out because that means that you can also rearrange them to to the order that you want but the thing is they're these ovals so they're not the traditional um, rectangle shapes so I can't really tell if these are the size of half pants or full pants, but they look like they're closer to full pants. I actually prefer bigger pants like this with fewer colors than watercolors with a lot of color options but with smaller amounts. I, I just like these more. This set actually comes with two brushes, which is so weird because the other one doesn't have the prime brand name on it i don't know if this is the shop just including it as a freebie or if all of their sets like this one include both of these but for this video i'm only going to be using the prang one because it also looks like it's a better quality this prang one is a size 6 round brush it reminds me of my artist's loft brush which are one of my favorites the only weird thing is the bristles are white, so I don't know if it will stain easily, but we'll see how it goes when I actually paint them. These watercolors are semi-moist, so they're very easy to reactivate. They're reminiscent of my White Nights, which if you guys don't know is my favorite watercolor ever. It, lo it also looks like there's a lot of dark colors in the pattern, which is very promising because that means they will come out very saturated and vibrant. These colors are named traditionally like what the color wheels were labeled when I was in school. So you would get names like red, orange, yellow, violet, and blue violet, colors like that. Which honestly sounds like it's more geared towards students because that is how what they were named in school and it also helps with color mixing it tells a lot about how the colors are mixed which i just prefer names like that that's how i name my colors in my head anyway so it's easier so we're moving on to the swatches i watered them down quite a lot because i want to see the, these colors very well i usually do this first so i know what they will look like and how i will mix them eventually I did end up also swatching them over a black line. I've used a um, waterproof ink for this just so I can see how transparent they are. And they mostly are very transparent which is surprising because a lot of inexpensive watercolors are very chalky and therefore they're not very transparent. This is a good thing because you want to be able to see the layers on top of each other when you're painting with them. So they're all mostly transparent except for the brown which is just really so opaque. So it doesn't mean that it's not usable, you will just have to use it differently because you won't be able to use as many layers with that color as, as the other colors. And the colors on this one look very clean, they're also very surprisingly very vibrant much more vibrant than the sakura koi the red is closer to magenta it's a much cooler red which is a good thing because you will be able to mix a lot more colors with this one uh, my favorite color out of all of them is the violet because it looks very nice and saturated this violet is just so rich and i just love using violet for shadows and mixing it with my orange or yellows which by the way also looks good in this set 
the on the side note the brush stained so much um, even though i tried to clean it as much as i can i wasn't able to clean it completely i think these colors might be staining or it might just be because the color of the bristles is white so we'll see when i actually go to paint with them if the colors do stain on paper so we are gonna be painting on this sketch that I did. I used my Baohong cold pressed paper because I just want to see how it feels like when it's used on paper that I would normally use. And I'm using my uni pins which are waterproof. I'm also going to be using the same brush for, that came with the watercolors because I like the way they feel and it's also really cool that for once an affordable watercolors brush is actually usable. So I have to admit that I wasn't really that inspired by the just the swatches and it wasn't until I started painting this sketch that I realized how much I really love these paints. They're so vibrant and the color payoff is amazing. They just mix so well together in the palette and the colors are very clean. And also even on actual paper, I love how the colors react to each other. You can see the transitions really well. Even with the orange and the violet, which are sitting next to each other, they just react so well together and I love that. Can I just say again that I love this brush so much? really does remind me of my artist's love brushes. It keeps its shape very well and it makes these very sharp lines, which I love so much, especially for painting clothes and folds on them. So if you're in the Philippines and have been wanting to try the, the artist's love brushes that I keep on talking about, I guess just buy the Prang watercolors because the brush is very similar to that one. The only difference is Maybe the, the weight of the brushes because the artist's soft one are just a tiny bit heftier than this one. And this does feel a little bit too light compared to the artist's soft one. But yeah, they're very similar in every other sense. They also don't hold that much water, which really might turn a lot of people off. But I personally don't care too much about that because I do try to do a lot of transitions with my painting. So this actually is a good thing for me because it reminds me to switch colors often. If my brushes were able to hold a lot of water with it, then I might even forget to do that. This is why my paintings most of the time look very colorful because I try to experiment with different colors together and it's also because of my brushes because they don't hold that much paint. So you guys can see how vibrant these colors are. Just one thing about these paints is that they don't lift too well. Maybe that's why the brush is stained really bad because the paints are just staining. But yeah, it's very hard to get them off once they're dry on the paper. You can see me try to rub water on the paper with my brush and I was trying to lift it. Usually with most of my other watercolors, they just lift very easily. This one, they didn't really get much of the paint out, so you need to be very careful when you're painting with them. They are easy to get out when they're still wet, so you can just wipe them off while you're still painting and that's fine. Th 
they also layer beautifully too because most of them are transparent maybe it doesn't layer as much as my other watercolors but for most of the time i feel like they would just layer is enough especially for sketching i don't know if, if this sounds really crazy but i think these might be one of my favorite watercolors trying to think when it's compared to watercolors that I've tried before that are at the same price range. I want to compare them to my Sakura Koi and my Kotman watercolors because those are both also student grade watercolors. So they're more vibrant and easier to lift from the pan than the Sakura ones. But I think they're maybe less transparent than the Kotman. But I didn't really like the Kotman that well. They just felt really underwhelming to me. They do remind me so much of my White Knights watercolors, which are my favorite. But these ones are a lot less expensive. The only thing about them is that they're not light fast. So my Magello ones are still my most vibrant watercolors, but they don't move so much on the paper and I love how these ones, the prime ones, how they behave on the paper. So if I had to choose between this one and my White Knights, maybe it would be a tie, but, but they're both used for different things. Because these ones, they aren't light fast, so they're amazing for sketches. And if you want to keep them in your sketchbooks where they don't see a lot of sunlight, which are how I use my watercolors the most anyway. My white nights, they are, they are light fast, so I want to use those for when I want to display my paintings. And they also just carry more colors than this one, so that's also a big thing. So yeah, I really love these watercolors. The only downside to them is that they aren't easy to lift. Uh, they're not that light fast and they stain on the paper and on the brush. And even though I like the packaging, it does the plastic does feel a little bit flimsy. It moves around a little bit and the plastic isn't thick or premium like the one that carries the Sakura Koi sketch box but they're very vibrant the color options just on this set are already awesome for how many you get and the brush that came with it is amazing and to top it off they're also very affordable so yeah i love them i would recommend them to anyone not just for students but also for other artists that want maybe a guilt-free palette for their sketches so yeah that's it for my thoughts on the prang watercolors Tell me how you guys feel about them, let's talk about them in the comments, and I'll see you guys soon.